Welcome, this is uh, 49F8, applying Gauss's law to find the electric field near a shell of charge. So here we have our two diagrams. For the diagram on the left, we are again outside the shell of charge. And then for the diagram on the right, we are inside our shell of charge. And notice that we use the letter R to represent the, the distance from the center of the structure to the Gaussian surface. And we have the letter A to represent the distance from the center of the structure to the shell of charge. And also notice that we're using the same symmetries we've used in the past, where we're using a spherical Gaussian surface symmetrically positioned about the center of the structure in this case. And what we find is that the electric field, if our point of interest is outside the shell of charge, is again our standard equation. Our electric field is equal to Ke times the Q, that is the charge inside the Gaussian surface, which is all the charge divided by r squared, r squared of course being the distance from the center of the structures of the points of interest, which is the radius of our Gaussian surface in this case. For the second part of this, where the point of interest is, for example, inside the shell of charge, we get the answer zero. And at first glance, that probably is shocking. But let's think about this. We're going to get E is equal to KEQ inside over R squared, just like we have done in the past. But ask yourself, what is the charge inside? Well, there's no charge inside this Gaussian surface because all the charge resides in the shell. And so that means that there's no electric field, zero newtons per coulomb meter squared. That's very interesting. That means that if I have, say, a cage made out of conducting material, and I charge up the metal, I zap it with lightning, whatever, I will get a lot of charge on this cage, all over the cage. But inside, I will get zero electric field. So a person could be inside and not feel the effects of an electric field. The, the hairs would not stand on end on their arm and all that kind of stuff. It's a very nice, it's called a Faraday cage. It's a very uh, uh, good protective instrument that keeps people safe in, if they're in environments with a lot of uh, charge, a lot of current, a lot of, lot of uh, high voltage particularly around. So um, for, for my classes, I tend to have these as conceptual questions. I, I would not say for my class using the method of Gauss's law as shown in class. I'd say, oh, what is the electric field inside a, a, a shell of charge? And the answer is zero. It raises the interesting point about what would be the gravitational field inside a shell of matter? And the answer is, can you think of it? The answer would be no gravitational field. <laughs> that means that if the Earth were in fact a shell of matter, and we could find a trapdoor that went inside the Earth. We could open that inner trapdoor and close it and float. We would not be pulled towards the middle of the Earth. We would float. We would just feel gravityless inside the shell of charge, shell of matter. Kind of interesting visualization when you think about it that way. Well, there we have it. Oh, so, I'm sorry, no, we don't have it. I've got one more thing. 
Oh, using the method of Gauss's law as shown in class, determine the electric field four meters from the center of a two meter radius, eight coulomb shell of positive charge. Okay, let's do it, but I wouldn't ask this question personally in my class. So here we have, uh, we have a shell of charge, and this is, of course, our A. And then around it, we have a point of interest, which is my Gaussian surface goes through. That's my point of interest. And we'll call that R. And we would say for this point of interest, E is parallel to DA. And then we state Gauss's law and we say the flux is equal to the integral of E dotted with DA. They are vectors, which equals Q inside over epsilon naught. And then I say, well, you know, E is parallel to DA on Gaussian surface. And so that gives me that flux is equal to the integral of the magnitude of E times the magnitude of DA times the cosine of zero because they're parallel which equals Q inside over epsilon naught. This cosine, of course, equals one. And then we say, oh, okay. So E is constant on GS. So my flux is equal to E integral dA, which equals Q inside over epsilon naught. We've been here before. And then I rearrange and I say E is equal to, oh, Mr. Step. And then I turn around and I say, okay, integral DA is equal to, well, it's gonna be a, remember, it's DA is for the Gaussian surface, not the charge. So this would be four pi R squared. Not a squared, but r squared. And so this gives me that e times 4 pi r squared is equal to q inside over epsilon naught. And then I say, okay, e is equal to q inside over 4 pi r squared epsilon naught. And I remember that Ke is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. So that gives me that E is equal to Ke Q inside over R squared. It's the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. And so we turn around and say, let's put some numbers in. E is equal to Ke. Q inside, well, the total amount of charge is an eight coulomb positive plus eight divided by R squared now, which is the R. It says, using the method Gauss's law that was shown in class, determine the electric field four meters from uh, the center of a two meter radius, eight coulomb shell of positive charge. It's about the Gaussian surface. Remember, R is about the Gaussian surface. That's the four meters, so four meters squared, which is gonna equal eight over 16 Ke, which equals 0.5 Ke. That's gonna be Newtons per coulomb meters squared. What does the this radius have to do with what does a have to do with it nothing unless the point of interest is inside so there we have it